Hey, everybody. Welcome. Uh, my name is Subhatai Ahmed, and I work with Jeff Hawkins at Numenta. And I'm going to give you a very quick tour of our poster, Sparsity in the Neocortex and its Implications for Machine Learning. I think we're all getting used to this new way of showing posters and uh, try to replicate a little bit of what it would be like if we were standing right in front of one another and I uh, was talking through it. Um, so the place to start on the poster is, the, is to look at the summary, which is in this uh, panel label summary. Um, and the main takeaways are kind of uh, outlined in here. And uh, they are basically that um, one is that most deep learning systems today rely on dense representations, uh, unlike the neocortex, which uh, where the representations are extremely sparse. Um, and it's actually uh, in the neocortex, uh, sparsity shows up in many different ways. And uh, it's actually, um, uh, you know, in the neocortex, both the activations of neurons are highly sparse, as well as the connectivity is, is really sparse. And that's kind of outlined in this panel I'm showing on the right here, sparsity in the neocortex. And the you know, activation sparsities are somewhere around 0.5% to 2%. Um, and the connectivity between two layers of cells that project to one another is somewhere around 1% to 10%. And the interesting thing here is, um, you know, well, there are many interesting things about it, but one of it is that deep learning systems are nothing like this. Um, and there the activations are a lot more dense, closer to 50% with ReLU. Um, and the weight matrices are typically about 100% dense. And so the question that we often ask is, you know, can deep learning networks benefit from sparsity? And if so, exactly how? And here we're showing two benefits um, uh, of sparsity. Uh, one is that um, uh, sparse representations are actually extremely robust, particularly when the dimensionality of the system is quite high. And the panel on the right kind of shows the walks through this from a mathematical standpoint uh, and, and some charts that I'm happy to walk through and answer questions about on the Slack. Um, it takes a little bit of time to walk through this, but uh, you can show mathematically that if you, as the dimensionality increases, the kind of the, the, the robustness of sparse representations and the stability of sparse representations increases exponentially uh, with that dimensionality. Um, in the lower left panel, here I uh, show uh, a very simple construction through which we can create sparse networks. And um, these networks are sparse in activations and connections, just like in the, in the neocortex, uh, which is, this is actually quite unusual in deep learning to do this. We have a very simple construction and we can train the networks um, through backpropagation. Um, in this uh, lower panel here, uh, we show through experimental results that if you train such sparse networks, you indeed do get much higher robustness uh, and much higher than dense networks. And I'm showing here the results with uh, two different data sets. One is with a, a speech data set, the Google speech commands data set. And if you look here, there are results for dense convolutional networks as well as sparse convolutional networks. Uh, the dense and sparse networks both get about the same accuracy in the, on the test set, which are, and these are competitive accuracies. But if you look at the noise score here, we're showing the average accuracy over a wide range of uh, noisy inputs. And you can see that the sparse convolutional networks are significantly, have significantly higher accuracy uh, to noise than the dense networks. And this is true, even though the sparse networks, this one in here has about 10% of the number of uh, non-zero weights that the dense uh, convolutional network has. And uh, the lower two rows show what happens if you try to create smaller dense networks. Um, you know, is it, the question there is, is it just the number of parameters or is there something else? And if you create smaller dense networks, you can reduce the number of parameters, but the accuracy starts to drop quite a bit and so does the accuracy on noise. So it's really, has to do with the fact that these are sparse representations embedded in a higher dimensional system. And that's really what's getting you the robustness exactly as what would be predicted on the math. And, and down below, we show that uh, you can get similar results with Cypher 10, which is an image uh, data set. If you look at the first row here under 0%, that's the overall accuracy um, on the standard test set. And then we add different levels of noise and you can see the accuracy is, is quite a bit better. Um, if you look at under 10% noise, for example, with the VGG network, uh, Construction where the sparse network is about 12% better. Uh, the last big thing we show in this poster is that we've actually spent quite a bit of time implementing sparse networks on hardware architectures, in particular on an FPGA. 
And the thing here is that sparsity can really give tremendous improvements in efficiency of deep learning networks, as long as you have the right kind of hardware uh, infrastructure and the hardware substrate. And we chose FPGAs because that allows us to really operate at the circuit level and really create circuits that are optimized for sparse uh, computations. And uh, uh, we've uh, done this on three different uh, Xilinx FPGA platforms, so the small, medium, I'm sorry, small, medium, and large. Um, uh, the Things here to focus on, um, if you look at one of the platforms here, there's dense versus sparse. Uh, the sparse system gets about 50X higher throughput uh, than, uh, than the dense systems. And we get this in two different ways. One is that if you look at a single network, um, the, uh, the sparse network is about 10 times faster than the dense network. However, because the sparse networks use so much less memory, we can actually fit five times as many sparse networks on the chip. And overall, if you combine these two, we get a 50X speed up uh, overall. Uh, we could show that similarly, you get huge improvements in energy efficiency. Um, and we also show here some results on GPUs showing that the sparse network is significantly faster than dense networks on, on, uh, on uh, sort of uh, large, large GPU systems as well. Okay, so kind of zooming back out, um, you know, a lot of the details are in these uh, references um, here um, and um, happy to take your questions on Slack and uh, hope, look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.